Hi, and welcome to today's uh, presentation, where we have the pleasure to present audiences uh, to help us through today's presentation, uh, Steen Thuesen, CEO of the, the company. The reason for the event, of course, uh, your criteria report fresh off the press. You also had a, a guidance downgrade earlier the, the week, so I'm sure that will also be, be cleared. But we got a little bit more in-depth information in this criteria statement and, of course, your capital situation. So I'm sure that is... That is elements that you will go through on this uh, on this event. Uh, as always, you can ask questions down in the box down below. Uh, do it in Danish, English, Swedish, uh, German. Uh, you decide. But the event will be kept at, at English, and I will try and and uh, and translate to the best of my abilities. But uh, Steen, I will hand the word over to you. Thank you very much, and uh, yeah, welcome to this uh, session. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Um, has been a wild uh, third quarter, I would say. Uh, lots of things going on. And I think we have many of you probably present here that have seen us before, but I hope also there'll be quite a few that is really new to the audience's story. So bear with me while I, I launch into that a bit as well. But otherwise we have, you can say roughly half an hour together here. I will try to make it expedient and, and, and fast moving. Uh, and then we can basically catch up on questions as we go along or towards the end of the, of the session. But um, first of all, I am very happy now um, as a CEO that I've got a, a very good wingman uh, with me, recently announced just uh, last week, but a, a seasoned industry ex experienced uh, person from, you can say, with hearing aid background and, and many other things, Tools Top, who has joined our team as CFO. And Tools, of course, is going to work with me very closely on all the exciting things related to our business scaling um, new markets uh, new structures but also of course the impending funding process and what will come beyond that so i just want to mention that that's a really important addition to our team and position as well for what uh, the future has in store otherwise i would say let's get back to what audience is about many of you probably have, have know that we are in the hearing aid business we are in a you can say in a segment that is often not addressed by major players uh, because uh, we're talking about markets um, with certain demographics uh, and certain purchase, you can say, capabilities. So in our focus uh, has been the middle income countries. So markets that are very people rich, but also has a poor infrastructure when it comes to hearing health. And according to WHO, there is around half a billion people in the world with disabling hearing loss. And around 60% of those are in the markets that we have as our focus. So there's a huge, you can say, captive audience there. And we're trying to address that starting out of India, where we have been present for about five years, um, developing the product, testing it uh, with support from a Danish market development fund. But recently in the last two years, we have had our own subsidiary and team, you can say being built up and in place and are now present across um, many major cities and also secondary and third kind of tier cities we are getting into now with our distribution and retail partners. So around 500 um, retail outlets, um, we have sort of, you can say, counted up to. Half of them are roughly active today and we are training and doing everything we can to support them. And uh, around, you can say, 80 collaboration partners of varying size. That's where our audience is right now. Um, and of course, as I mentioned this, the 60% number, huge number, if you think about it, in terms of millions of people. And what we are doing now, we are addressing these, you can say, segments step by step, country by country. And hopefully, we'll be doing a really good job in that space the coming years. But hearing loss is not just something for developing economies. It's also for Western countries. And, and what they have in common really is this issue of cost of a solution and the complexity in having it fitted. So what we have done in audience, we have basically digitized the entire process that has many manual steps and many visits to hearing experts and, and so forth and equipment that has to be adjusted by professionals. So we've built it all into one device, what we call a hearable device. Um, it looks like more of a headset and that's what we can say we are now bringing out a solution with many new elements in a new form factor, but essentially helping alleviate hearing loss um, at a much more affordable price. So this is a, our product called VEN. And of course, people in the Scandinavian countries know what VEN means. Um, we, we selected that name really as a global brand and have it registered in many countries now. It works really well for us in India. It has got a good connotation and ease to pronounce. But VEN essentially uh, is a hearing aid. Uh, it's a binaural device support for both ears with industry quality fitting 
and amplification of, of kind of the, you can say that the sounds and so on, up to a level where you are in the severe hearing loss area. Um, we have a, a nice app that runs on smartphones with Android and iOS, so people can basically run the hearing test from the app, but they don't need to. They can do without the app and just use the device, and they can see the results of their hearing loss, and they can adjust it subsequently and, 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 and so forth. They can, of course, stream music from a music app that will also be delivered in the quality that you can say a person needs amplification of certain frequencies and so on. So in our view, it's a nice all-in-one device self-fitting hearing aid, uh, part of this, you can say, new uh, force in the market that also right now is making it inroads in countries like the US as over-the-counter products. So we are one of the first movers in that space and have got a great offering we feel now in the market that is now making its way out in, in the retail stores and into people's homes. Um, that's sort of the very brief, I, I would say, audiences. Where are we? What is that we're out with today? So as part of the, the third quarter, this has been, you can say, quarter that has been building on the first half where we generate around 1 million Danish kroner in sales revenue. In the third quarter, we exceeded that a bit, uh, well, a good deal with around 2.2 million. So we are, you can say, we're building revenue trajectory step by step. We are building the number of outlets that are growing. Um, and at the same time, you can say we are also really trying to make sure that the products just, and don't just end up on the shelves in the stores, but they actually go out in the hands of an end user. So there's a lot of work going on in working with the channels on this. Now, at the same time, of course, we have publicized this previously, but we are on the lookout for the next round of growth financing to help audiences scale further in India, but also in markets like we mentioned a bit, like the US and, and, and other markets in Europe and so forth, where we're going to introduce uh, the product that we're going to talk about in a little while, Companion. So we have, you can say, a great platform and offering in the market today, but we need to build further on that and, and go further beyond. Um, of course, like any other company, we are securing the financing as we need at a given stage, and that's what we have been doing. Um, but right now we are listed on Spotlight, which is what you said, Michael, early on. That was one of the sort of key things that happened in the third quarter. We moved from one marketplace to another, and of course that's a big thing in, in its own right, but the whole purpose was to uh, being able to address the, the Nordic investor segment better um, in Sweden and, and Norway and so forth. But now we are present with a, you can say, in, in, in a marketplace that is quite dynamic and well suited for younger kind of life science and med tech companies like, I think, with the category that we fit in as a company. So for us, of course, this has been a super exciting period and, and full of, full of, you can say, things to do. In terms of, you can say, our financial performance, these numbers really show what I, what I mentioned, that you can say solid growth from one quarter to another. Um, we have also, at the same time, been really curtailing expenditures in areas where we feel we don't need to do that. We shouldn't do it right now because now it's about marketing our current offering. So we've been really reviewing our entire spend portfolio of, of things and um, certain things have been you can say given higher priority and certain things have been moved out but we're really trying to manage the whole sort of investment in the company from an EBITDA point of view and and you can say r d wise and so on we are, we are running it very lean and trying to invest as much as we can in go to market right now at the same time you can say that there's a clear need for capitalizing the company further and that's what we've been working on diligently and it will be coming out with further information, our aim is to complete a round uh, before the end of the year. Now, if I sort of look out to, so what does the rest of the year hold in store? Well, the is that, of course, as I said, we have a product in the market. We have been able to see in, in the sort of start of fourth quarter that there are some, you can say, some, some issues in the market where, I mean, we're also learning about the actual rhythm of the Indian market. But, for example, October is a big festival month, Diwali, and, and a lot of people, they spend their time socializing with family instead of buying hearing aids. So, you know, so month uh, on month on month, the, 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 the lookout is sort of changing slightly differently. But we can see that right now it's key for us to make sure the product we have sold in are being getting sold out in the channel. So for us, that takes quite a lot of, of effort. At the same time, we have also announced this, but we have secured some really exciting new collaboration partners uh, called um, Tulasi, a, a pharmacy chain, and and Shruti, which is part of the of the of the Medtronic organization, but focusing on 
uh, hearing aids for kind of um, underserved areas of the population in big cities. And with those two, plus some other ones we haven't really talked about yet, we can see that this is going to be fueling a good deal of the future growth. But we think this is going to come primarily in Q1. And what's, that's why we have been really adjusting outlook for this curve, basically saying that we think that the revenue growth will be a bit more, you can say, constrained, not as steep as it was the, from Q2 to Q3. So that's what we have, met, we have been communicating this week. And, um, Steen, uh, is, yeah. is it also macro driven? We are all talking about this, uh, yeah. you know, a, a slower growth. Yeah. Uh, I know we don't talk about slow yeah. growth in, in, in India. And we are also hearing that the hearing aid sector in general, and I know in, it's in the higher yeah. price segment, is also starting to feel some pinches from, from the economic outlook. Is, is it solely because you push activities, uh, capital, or are you also seeing some macro there or, or are you to uh, a newer entrance to 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 know whether it's macro or what is driving it i think it's fair to say say that there is an element of macro in this absolutely i mean people in india as as, as elsewhere are feeling the, the the costs of of higher inflation and so on so i mean i i often say that thank god that we are in the lower kind of you can say price bracket the entry-level segment price-wise because at least If people are being pressed for, for, you can say, money to invest, maybe this is exactly where they will consider our solution as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it's, it's a mixture of different reasons. But uh, just to be prudent, we have sort of, you know, put that announcement out that that we are we expect lower growth the last uh, two months. Not that we are not growing, but it's just it's not going to be as fast as we thought. But also, you can say, due to the fact that Companion is now becoming available in, in Q1 instead of, we thought, in Q4 earlier. Um, now, what we are doing right now with, with Companion, of course, is that we are launching this product into the into the market. And if I just step on to the next slide here. Um, so why are we launching this new product? But it is because we have made a great solution, but we can see that in order to rapidly address other markets, we in audiences needs to broaden the access to the solution. And the best way we can do that is actually to put it in as a, you can say, as a as a product in consumer channels, but where we do not call it a medical device. It's not a hearing aid, but it helps people uh, enhance their hearing and, and and really get a good experience in situations where they may have difficulty listening in, in, in conversations and so on. So it fits in that space called an advanced hearable, but to all intents and purposes, it's a quality device that can really deliver a good sound experience. And of course it comes with the app, just like Vin does uh, and so on, but it stays on, on that, you can say, other side of the of the sort of marketplace. Um, and we are we are quite excited about it. We are gonna test it, we're gonna launch it even in Denmark and, and Sweden, you know, in, in retail stores there. And, and uh, we'll be starting to sort of introduce that in markets where we can get access to reasonably easy. And of course the US, huge market, but we're not gonna, Go ahead and carpet bomb the U.S. market from start, but we're going to make it available on Amazon. We're going to be making it available in some distribution partnerships and so forth. And we'll be taking that, you can say, pragmatic step by step around the world as we see opportunities. And, and there's a question here, maybe when when, when yeah. you are by the companion, or we can take it in the end. But is the price higher for companion? Uh, I, I you kind of indicate that, but is that the call of the market you are going into? And should it be sold to a different target group than 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 than, than being? We believe it's a different target group. Uh, it, it would be people from you can say that that has the sort of beginning uh, challenges hearing, maybe up to what you call moderate hearing loss, the way it becomes where you need to have something prescribed from. So, but but covering that kind of quite large space, um, TV listening devices, you know, this is a, a, as good as as one of those. So price-wise, we think it's going to be probably at the same level as then. Um, you know, there is a certain price structure in the consumer electronics markets, and, and I think we will fit in where similar solutions are, are priced. So could be up to $400 um, for, for the device or a bit less. Yeah. So And, I, and, and the target group, group is, is is not hearing impaired. It is actually, you know, uh, like uh, there is a big market for, for you know, just listening to radio, listening to TV, uh, listening to uh, yeah. to, to right. big crowds and so on. Uh, there, there is a market for that. So that's that's the target group uh, through electronic uh, change and 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 uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, e-marketing uh, vendors. Yes. But, but I, I would say people with, you can say, beginning age-related hearing loss from kind of mild 
up towards the moderate. This is a solution that can help a lot of people, uh, you can say, here better as well. So, yeah. But basically, um, I'm showing that on this slide here, so that, that we have this solution that is addressing, at one level, the medical grade space, but at another, another level, we're able to address the sort of consumer electronics uh, market. And, and this is kind of what we are going to market with, uh, as a, you can say, as, as a point of view. Um, <clears throat> maybe getting a bit complicated here, and, and I don't know if sure we have time to dive very deep into it, but the point is that the market we're addressing is actually a quite, it's, it's a market that is put together of many different devices. So if you think about our solution, then at one level, you have really advanced hearing aids. You have the sort of connected hearing aids. You have different types of, of amplifiers and you have even like AirPods and so on at the other the, to the left. But, you know, solutions to the right are kind of prescribed and fitted, whereas the other ones are really, you can say, adapted uh, by the, the, you can say, various settings. But we are able to play across both from the professional segment into the, you can say, airport space with solutions that are easy to use, um, relatively inexpensive, but uh, has got a good good quality performance. So we will continue to enhance this sound capability we have. And of course, amplification according to kind of the legislation, but really giving people a good, a good listening experience and a good hearing experience too. So this is kind of why we think that for many people, if you never have had a hearing aid before, our solution is a really, really good starting point. But for many people that has had hearing aids, we can see they are saying, well, I, I don't like these small things. I lose them all the time. I like something that is a bit, you can say, that, that, that's, that I can find. I know where it is, and it gives me a really good sound experience. So either as an initial device or as a complementary device to other hearing aids is where we think this is a really good, good solution. And... Yeah, I think we're sort of coming coming to the end here, but just really, um, you know, people know that uh, listened to it before that we are going to market as in distribution and in retail, uh, so online as well as in uh, in, in of course uh, e-commerce wise, but also in classic retail. Uh, we have been expanding the channels in India. That has been a key focus for us. Uh, so the the pharmacy chain to last is one of the first. Why is that interesting? It's interesting because pharmacies get a different clientele than hearing clinics. They get people with hearing loss maybe at an earlier stage and maybe not as you can say profound hearing loss as we see in many hearing clinics. So this is super interesting to broaden this. And in recent years, pharmacists have started to market and sell solutions that are priced slightly higher than just, you can say, uh, sort of pills and, and creams. So this is something that they're quite excited about. Uh, this is in Southern India. We are working with Tulasi and it's a, in, the, in the big city of Coimbatore, they are headquartered. So, we are trying to sort of develop that channel too now as well. And I think it's, it's quite encouraging what's going on there. Um, yeah, otherwise, I think we, we discussed, you can say the, the road from here, you know, uh, India, Asia, and then on to kind of Europe and, and the US in different steps. Now, if I just sort of pause for a bit and, and say, well, 2022 was a hugely busy year for us. We changed the marketplace. We are launched the product. Um, now we, it's about driving sales of, you can say, VIN, but also in terms of launching um, another product in the market uh, this quarter. So we have soft launched it on a crowdfunding campaign, of course, uh, companion. But now in the coming year, there's a lot of focus on really driving this out in the market in different uh, locations, different channels. And then we have these longer term efforts going on still with the FDA, the quality program and so on in order to open up the regular markets in more locations as well. And that's part of what we are going to see uh, further growth funding to realizing. This is this, you can say market growth, as well as um, developing the, the quality, the, 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 the certifications further. So just, you can say to wrap up, why sort of invest in Orientis? Well, I, I still believe that we have shown that this is a investment case that holds a lot of potential now, we are at a place, you can say, share price-wise, where we are very affordable. Um, the whole market, of course, is taking a downturn. But now we are at a point where we say, now this is where we can start to really show the difference from going forward. We have two products in the market soon uh, in different marketplaces, so hopefully complementing each other as well. Um, and then we've got this solution that really addresses what people has the need for good hearing uh, in a very self-contained and easy to understand manner and we've built a good team for this purpose so i hope this was useful and uh, for everyone participating and uh, look forward to take your your questions so thank you very much for listening in
And uh, let's start by the first one because you know you you have built out your India quite uh, quite heavily, I would say, compared to what I listened to last time on, on, on sales places. But but what is holding them back? You're only selling from half of them. Uh, I, are they missing your product? Are they missing training? Have you have you missed the capacity due to not raising capital to to really push out and and train them? Or is there some other reasons why you're only selling out from from half of your potential partner places? That's a good question. I mean, most of them, um, if you have a, a partner with like 70 outlets, uh, you actually more or less have to take them. You can say you can gather them, of course, in one room. But in order to make them effective, you have to train them, work with them one by one, literally. And there is retail, you can say, staff that has to be trained. And But often they start with... Uh, doing the tests across uh, a number of, of stores. So this is why you can say, yes, we bring a part partner on board, but right now the immediate effect is maybe not the, the entire uh, number of stores, but but something less than that. That's the situation for us. Um, and of course, uh, as we as we prove that there's a good market for this, uh, you know, more outlets will be coming on uh, step by step. It is just because if I take the you know the mid range of yeah. the guidance, you are you are actually selling a little bit less than than uh, if if I recall that yeah. than this quarter, you know, and yes. and me thinking you would be building this out, you know, and and I I guess yes. backwards it would also have been a problem that you had three hundred and fifteen before Q, Q, before now and and you were only sell from half, so there's no change in that. It has always been like that that you only sell from. You know, around uh, that you need to build it up. Yeah. There is nobody who has gone back and having sold it and and do not sell it anymore. Uh, is that correctly understood? I, I cannot I cannot say that for sure. But but the thing is that that um, it's safe to say that when when we sell in a good deal, people buy these. You can say they need to sell them on before placing new orders. Mm -hmm. so that that's how it works. And I think that there are some periods where we will see where we have been really good at selling in, but where they're selling out, it actually takes a while to. To happen, and and that's 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 what I'm saying that 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 has got a huge focus for us because that's where we get new orders from. So yeah. part of it is still you can say introducing the concept, making people you can say aware of it, and 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 you can say getting getting the solution to the right people. We have found that many of the people in India have got really severe kind of to profound hearing loss, and they're looking for solutions in the hearing clinics to address that. So that's why what we have been focusing on as well as part of our of our product development is to increase the identification of our product so we can kind of up towards what is called profound hearing loss, which typically is, is unique solutions uh, that are catering for that. But we're trying to lift what we can do so we can address the, the larger customer segment as well in India in, in that area. Yeah, sorry, my, my calculation, of course, missed this selling in and selling out. There's a, there's a, there's no, that's, a, there that's, will that's always okay, be but, a lack there. <laughs> but that, but that, 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 that's what makes, you can say, make a, a good business really that we are that we can handle that. And that that's a key priority for us. Yeah. So. And then there's a, the question here. Do you have a backup plan if, if, if you don't uh, catch to raise capital in, in this quarter? Is there some other backup plans that you would go to borrowing more? Yeah, but you, just people... Yeah, people know that that we have some uh, received some bridge loans, and I think that of course that's a that is not necessarily the desirable way because bridge loan has to be repaid. But that's not we're very focused on the on the equity route, uh, obviously, and uh, we are exploring other things as well. But I think that's our our primary route going forward. That's and then there's a question. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And then there's a question here about: uh, Is it a, is there anything on the product supply chain development that has delayed companion? You know, I, I thought that you that you said uh, earlier this year you expected it maybe to start a little bit in Q4. Not now it's Q Q Q1. Is it market uh, you are feeling not the not the push or uh, need for it? Uh, is it different markets you are going to? Or has there been some? Is there still some problems in the supply chain or in, or in the development of the? Of no, the I would say it's just if, if you if you can sort of gather from from my my, my presentation, this, this has been an extremely busy quarter and 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 time for us, and 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 doing everything that it can to complete. You can say the software versions for this uh, companion product um, and and packaging and all of that. It's just simply you can say a function of function of time. It's also a function of. Uh, 
you know, had it been out, let's just say earlier raising uh, the larger round, we could have, of course, felt comfortable about maybe putting more into this already now. But we have been sort of really managing, you can say, the business diligently. Uh, as, uh, and, and that's where we are now. So we are essentially at the end of, 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 the, of the product development for, for that particular solution. And, and we'll be starting to test it uh, with, with customers now here in, in, in Q4. And, uh, you know, we, are, we launched it on, on Kickstarter as a way for people to buy into the concept and support it and, and uh, see what, what comes out. We, have, we can see there's interest from some, some countries that we've been wondering where, you know, should we go there? And, and now we can see, yes, that, that sounds likely that we should go. So, so it's, it's really it's a matter of how much can we squeeze into one half year. And I think um, when we sort of are doing it like this, it gives us the, the time to actually put it in the market where, where, where we are ready to do so. Yeah, yeah. there's actually one who has bought it through the crowdfunding. And, and there, of course, you can follow that you are halfway yeah. through your Kickstarter. Yeah. I'm guessing it's not the amount that you are interested in the, on the no. Kickstarter. Not that cash is not good enough, but it's, the, it's, it's a marketing tool, right, for kicking yeah. off some, some expression there. So there's not a real question, but I, I maybe have one, you know, would you raise the Kickstarter amount, you know, to keep having uh, this, uh, <laughs> you know, this as a selling channel and, and actually, uh, you know, yeah. getting a feel for where, where can it sell, where can't it sell and, uh, yeah. and getting, uh, you know, some stories out about how much being bought and how much you have kickstarted or, you know, collected of money. Uh, any thoughts about no. that? Yeah, it, it is, and and it's it's really interesting. And I think because we want to be uh, driving the e-commerce angle, it's really important to learn about this. And 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 we felt this was the best way to to kind of launch it quite broadly and see how it fares. And um, and I think uh, the, we've, we've, it's a nice it's a nice uh, uh, kind of page we have made on 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 Kickstarter with all the information and uh, helps us think about marketing this in in consumer retail. So. And by the way, you know, Kickstarter is one thing, but it's going to run subsequently on Indiegogo. I mean, there's these two big sites and, and we were sort of really deliberating. Should we go with one first or the other? And we went with Kickstarter on advice. But but uh, Indiegogo is typically a place where products like this uh, do quite well. So we'll see. But we'll be doing that for the month of December. So maybe people can can put something under the Christmas tree uh, almost. So, yeah. And, and listen to the Christmas music yeah. uh, on the TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's a question here. You know, now you are you are actually moving plants in in the US, uh, in both in Europe and and and, and in, in the US in this yeah. consumer electronics. And you are kind of moving into Q1, uh, Q1 this year. But uh, do we have some partners there? Because you might still be a little bit capital restrained. We don't, uh, of course, that will depend on 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 your capital raising. But if you are a little bit capital restrained, I guess I'm reading a little bit in, in your reporting that, that 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 you are starting to act at your capital restraint. Your your go to market in India is more partner driven instead of trying to build your own platform and, and, and going out on that. Yeah. So some some thoughts about these two markets because I don't think it's 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 you can try US, but but it, it might cost some money if if you don't have a partner lifting you in. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think we we will be. Definitely exploring the partner route with this consumer electronics device. I think when we are a manufacturer of an FDA kind of approved product, it's 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 important to be able to have a subsidiary and everything in the US ourselves. Um, but I think you know, it's not that we have got um, aspirations this year to sort of you can say build a huge presence in the US. We're going to do it moderately, step by step, and and learn as we go along. And we have had some dialogues with some some players in this um, in this field that are distributing products for, to, for example, hearing aid uh, clinics and so on. So we, we're looking at going that, that direction and get some, you can say, good good exposure, but not necessarily entire country from day one, but enough to sort of start learning and, and start building the, the presence. So. And then uh, I will let you off the hook, but I, I have a little bit of a nerdy question, maybe because I yeah. covered this industry. Now you're going for, for this segment, you know, yeah. if I should be a little bit harsh, Half a year ago, you said, you know, this segment, you know, is 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 really has inferior products, and it has, you know, uh, yeah. seventy five dollar uh, bad uh, amplifying that can destroy your hearing. Now you're yes. going into this market, and afterwards you will go in through the OTC FDA way with with, with a with a different hearing aid. But yeah. do you see any problems in 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 having 
hearing aids at around the same price in in both segments kind of uh, you know could there be uh, could you have some problems by yeah. starting in that segment that is kind of you know but by going the other way uh... it's a good question i would say twofold so some retailers don't like to have medical grade products like medical devices because it's a different business those we can address with companion because it's a consumer electronics device in in the medical you can say space there are some players that that would have seen solutions like ours that are finding them quite attractive so we want to address those as well over time with a sort of fda registered device but i would say one of our competitors uh, kind of or, or, or uh, you can say colleagues in the in the space new era uh, out of australia they have actually had these earbuds devices that are sort of a bit you can say in our space in the market for some years and now they're coming with and and like and just like we will an OTC approved kind of device that is a hearing aid so companies has done this before and made a transition and you can say the important thing is to become known for a quality experience and then you can you can build on that but that's what we would try to do and, and I know my question maybe you should ask the very big players there whether they will have a problem I, I know it's yeah. a little bit different for you but I, I needed to ask it to you Steve. and yeah, I don't that's... think we have any more questions so uh i think I will let you off the hook and uh, and say thank you for going through this and and the, and the questions and also to the audience listening. May everybody have a, a nice weekend. Yeah, thank you very much.